Hey everyone, this is going to be a side-by-side -side comparison of the Stampede 4x4 VXL to the Hillion Victus. I'm going to try to shoot this the best way I can because I am actually holding my camera in my hand. But there have been a lot of questions about this on forums, on YouTube, and a lot of other places about which one between these two is the better truck. Um, I'm going to go through a box stop comparisons between the two. As you guys know, I have videos up on both of the trucks. Um, and I've run both of the trucks an awful lot. So I'll go ahead and get started with um, the radios. Then I'll actually go around the whole, both of the trucks and then break it down to also the electronics and some of the durability and the handling of the trucks. So first off, we'll go ahead and we will look at the radios. Uh, the Traxxas VXL Stampede 4x4 comes with a new TQI radio. They got rid of the TQ one. Um, it is okay for what it is. Um, it does have some adjustability, but you do that as far as with these two buttons right here. And they actually give you a printout sheet to go through some of the settings and the menus of this. Um, you actually, unless you've got certain things memorized, you do need that to do the adjustability on this. And it does have your throttle and st steering trims right here and also a setting for... Um, your neutral are for to do like 70% 70, 70 drag and 30% um, acceleration and stuff on it. The handling of the radio is pretty good, but this radio is a two channel radio only, but the receiver, I believe is up to four to five channels. So with the Helion one, they don't give you a menu to actually do adjusting on it, but the plus to this radio, there are two things about this radio that I did like more than the Traxxas one. The feel, both of them feel okay, but this radio actually is a true three-channel radio. It does have a third channel right here on the side, and the receiver does have a third channel on it as well. So for me, that kind of gave this radio um, a plus up over the Traxxas TQI because of the third channel. And it also has one other feature, too, as well that I like. I left my radio on, and sometimes I leave all my radios on periodically. But this one has an automatic cutoff, the Helion one. So after about, I think it's about 10 minutes, the radio just shuts off if there's no activity or anything for it. And to me, that is also a big plus, where the Traxxas one, just because of my negligence, I have left it on for two, three days, just because the on-off switch is now in the back. And... That's no fault of Traxxas, but an auto cutoff switch for about 10 minutes would, have, would actually be good for this. And if it was an actual three channel radio it would actually be good. So as far as the radios go, in my opinion, I like the Helion one um, just because it is a true three channel radio. And also because of the auto cutoff, they both do use uh, four double A's for the radio. So for this so far, the radio on the Helion, I like a lot better than the one on the Stampede 4x4 VXL, even if the VXL does have the TQI radio. Now, as far as comparing the two trucks, um, we'll start off with the tires. Everyone knows that the VXL tires, these talons on here, they kind of suck. Um, you don't really get really good traction with them. I know some people do like them, but the first things that people usually always replace on a Stampede 4x4 is going to be the tires. Now, they do have the XL5 version, which does have updated uh, Mini Max tires, which are excellent. And I wish they would have done that with this version. It would have made it a, a lot more enjoyable to drive. But these tires, you don't get a lot of traction with them. I know why Traxxas did it to kind of have an all purpose tire, but they kind of suck when you go to a track or you're really in some dirt and stuff because you really don't get any traction with them. And it causes the truck to kind of power slide. The Helion Invictus comes with these old school kind of tractor tread tires, but the compound on it is soft, but it's not so soft to where they would actually wear out. And this helps the truck handle a lot better than the Stampede 4x4 VXL because the tread wears a lot better the compound of the tires is also good, too. And if you can see kind of the comparisons to the two, they are a slight bit larger. So it helps with jumping and dampening of the truck. And it also helps when you're jumping in the air and you can control your throttle a little bit better. I know because the air is going to catch in between there. You can actually, when the car jumps, 
accelerate or hit the brake and it kind of helps you leave it out in the air. So as far as tires go, the Invictus has the stampede on that. Um, the next thing is going to be the bodies. I like both bodies. I know some people don't like the Invictus body because it looks toyish like and some people don't like the stampede body because they say it doesn't really look like a truck. But both bodies I actually like. So between those two, it's a tie there. Um, as far as the durability of the body, the Stampede 4x4's body is a little bit weaker. And it's because they have these body mounts way over in the rear and the back. And sometimes when you do a wheelie, it could hit back here. Or if you jump, this hits. And the first thing to break on these bodies is this back part. I've seen people actually put bars across here to keep this secure down, which helps. Um, and I know that with the XL5 version of this truck now, they do include some foam inserts are some foam mounts to actually put underneath here so the body can have a lot more cushioning and it doesn't move around as much the invictus body as you can see i've been bashing and trashing it the plastic or the lexon on here does seem to be a tad bit thicker than the vxl one but the way the body's put on here and it does have this guard back here um the body has lasted a lot of bashing with it so as far as durability of the bodies the invictus one from what I have done in my experience, is going to be a lot better than the Stampede 4x4's body. But I like the look of both of the bodies. Now, let's go ahead and get these bodies off real quick. And do a comparison of some of the electronics. Now, the Stampede 4x4 comes with their VXL brushless system. And the Invictus comes with the reactor system. Now... Recently, Helion did a recall on this current reactor speed controller. This is, I still have the 45 amp one. The one that they're replacing it with is a 35 amp one. So you can only run 2S on that one. Whereas this one, you can run 3S on. So I'll just do the comparisons with the 45 amp one compared to the VXL one. As far as these systems go, the VXL one is a lot better. The speed control, I believe, is rated at either 80 or 100 amps, where this one is only 45. So the VXL one has twice the amperage of the Helion one. Also, as far as the motors, the VXL motor is a lot more powerful than the Helion reactor motor. Even though they're, bo they're both 3,500 kV, the VXL one just has so much more power than the Helion one. Um, they both tend to get hot and really hot when you run 3S. But as far as comparing the two side by side, if you had to choose, I know the VXL one is now 199 which is to me pretty expensive. And the Helion one is 99 but it's only the 35 amp one, which you can only run 2S on. If you're just trying to get a brushless system, um, you could probably get a Hobby Wing one that would give you just a, about the same amount of power and speed and pay a lot less. But as far as these comparisons, the VXL system is going to be a lot better than the reactor system. The servo, of course, that's going to go to Traxxas because this has the 2075 servo. And the Helion one is one that they've been using in a lot of their kits. It's okay for what it is. They're both waterproof and water resistant. But the Traxxas one is a lot stronger and it is faster as well. Um, durability. I am going to give durability to the Helion Invictus. I've bashed this truck like no tomorrow. And I've only had one problem and issue, which a lot of Invictus owners have. And that's something in the gearbox. What I had to actually do for this, it was shim the actual diffs. And there's actually videos and information on that. I don't believe you should have to do that with any kit that you get. You just have to shim the diffs. Or as far as the Stampede 4x4, I did not have to shim the disc, but there is one thing that it is notorious for doing is over here, always on the left hand side, over time, dirt gets up in here and with a lot of speed and power, and even if you put the MIP um, CVDs on here, this tends to wear and you usually have to replace that. But as far as the internal gears, I have never had a problem with them stripping or the same problem I've had with the Invictus. I didn't have to shim the diffs or anything. So as far as the drivetrain, I'll have to give that to the Stampede 4x4 because I have not had any problems with the drivetrain like I did with the Invictus. Um, durability, I've broken A-arms on the Stampede 
and I've had it replace them with RPMs. I have not broken any A-arms on any of my Invictus trucks. Um, so as far as that aspect is concerned, I give that to the Invictus. Also, another thing is that the drive shafts. Traxxas is still including these plastic drive shafts with their Stampede 4x4s, even the brushed edition, where Helion actually includes, if you can see that, metal dog bones. And that is a huge plus because another thing with the Stampede 4x4, the XL, and even the XL5 one, is that these plastic drive shafts, they tend to start bending and then they break. And then you have to either replace them or get MIPs. That's 60 bucks a pair. Whereas with the Invictus, I haven't had any of these break. I haven't had any problems with any of these where that's money that you actually save in your pocket. I do not have the batteries in front of me, but they both do come with nickel metal battery packs. The Stampede also has an option to get it with um, a LiPo, which is going to be a 2S 4000 milliamp LiPo by Traxxas. And they were selling, I don't know if they still do, a version that comes without the battery. So as far as comparing the batteries stock out the box, the Traxxas battery is going to be better because it is 3000 milliamps, even though the Helion one is a eight. Um, I think it's a 9.6, but it's an 1800 milliamp. So you only get about five minutes, six minutes of runtime. And with the Stampede, you'll probably get about 10 or so. But to include an 1800 milliamp battery pack in here is just not, it's not good to do that. They should have went ahead and put a 3000 in here and just did a seven cell pack. So as far as the batteries go, stock out the box of the nickel metals. That'll also go to the Stampede. Also, what you do not see on here is the Stampede 4x4 does come with the Willy bar. I just took mine off, which is another plus for this truck where the Invictus does not include a Willy bar. I haven't had a need for a Willy bar with this, but um, it'd be nice to have at least something back here for that other than when you actually start doing Willys, dragging your bumper along. One other thing I want to talk about while I was mentioning the drivetrains, I probably can't get this off, is that the Invictus... As you see, I put a slipper clutch in there. It does not come with a slipper clutch. The Stampede 4x4 does come with the slipper clutch, um, which is another plus factor for the Stampede as far as comparing these two. You have to purchase this separately, and I think it's about $20, um, 20 to $25 for that. And you have to unscrew all this, and you have to do a lot of maintenance to actually get that back in there. Once you put the slipper clutch in, it does handle a lot better. Um, as far as the drivetrain is concerned, but it should actually come with it. But they were probably doing it, trying to trying to keep the cost down. Um, talk about handling with these trucks. As you can see, the Invictus seems to be probably about an inch lower than the Stampede 4x4, which helps it tremendously when handling on a track um, and even outside just bashing it around. Um, one other thing is that the body on the Stampede, you see these posts are pretty high. The body sits up pretty high for it as the Invictus it sits down pretty low. So as far as the handling of these two trucks, especially that I stock out the box, the Invictus has the Stampede on that. I mean, I've taken corners almost full speed with my Invictus where with the Stampede, I couldn't do it. But a lot of that also plays into the tires. Now, you can adjust this a little bit to lower the center of gravity here. As you see here, I do have it as low as it'll go without taking these shot guards down. There are two more mounts, but I kind of like the shot guard look on there. But this is as low as this will go with the stock settings and the stock shocks. Um, you can probably get banded shocks or even get the front shocks and put those in the rear and try to lower it down. I've gotten it to probably about that low. But once again, that's doing more adjustments and buying extra parts for it. So as far as handling goes, I'd give that to the Invictus and the bashability as far as parts breaking. I give that to the Invictus as well. Uh, shocks. The shocks are about even. I have broken or at least popped one of these shock caps off of my Invictus. Even though it does have this metal or aluminum ring around it, these still are plastic. I have hit a jump and come down at an angle and broken one of these off. And as you guys know, that once one of those break off and snap or it loosens those screws up, it's kind of a done deal. So... I've done that with my Stampede several times. I've had to replace the shocks on there as well. So as far as the durability of the shocks, I would say that's probably about even with that. Um, what other things on here? 
parts, ava parts availability and hop-up parts. We all know that the Stampede is going to be a lot better than the Invictus as far as that. They have a lot more parts out for the Stampede than they do for the Invictus. The Invictus is probably going on about a year old. And there are a couple of things out there. I know Helion has some aluminum upgrades for it. And I believe I saw a bumper and stuff for it as well. But as far as parts availability, it's almost unlimited with the Stampede 4x4 because it's following the Slash 4x4 platform. And then you have, of course, Traxxas has custom-made parts for it. They have light sets. Um, they have all kinds of aluminum stuff you can put on it. Um, and then there's actually some of the aftermarket parts for it from RPM. And the list goes on and on and on. Um, one other thing I want to mention to wrap this up is tires and wheels. For the Stampede 4x4, you can only use 2.8 size wheels or you can use short course wheels. The only way you can use 2.2 size wheels on the Stampede is if you get the RPM wide crawler revolver wheels because what's going to happen is when you get 2.2 inch wheels, it's actually going to hit on this part right here, which um, to my just to my for my opinion, it should be able to use 2.2 um, inch wheels right off the bat. You shouldn't have to go out and buy a special set of wheels because it is sometimes kind of hard to find those just to be able to fit 2.2 inch wheels on here. Um, as far as the Invictus goes, whether it's 2.2 or 2.8. They will fit on here um, without any modifications or without having to get special tires and wheels. It does have enough room for that to clear up in here for 2.2 inch wheels to actually fit on it without having to get the RPM revolver one. So that is uh, my comparisons and my thoughts on these two trucks and owning both of these two trucks. Um, one other thing I want to mention is speed. The Stampede 4x4 is faster then the Invictus, um, probably by maybe a mile or two, a couple miles, maybe three at the most. Um, the real performance is when you actually go to 3S LiPo. Uh, the Stampede 4x4 still is a lot faster than the Invictus, and that's just because of the brushless system as well. Um, I did put, at one time, the VXL system into my Invictus, and it did actually perform a lot better. But this is a stock-by, stock-out-the-box comparisons between the two. So... The Stampede 4x4 is a lot faster than the Invictus. But like I said, the Invictus does handle a lot better. And it's not just because of it being slower. It just handles a lot better. And also it jumps a lot better. And it's just because of the way they constructed this whole truck with the low profile that it has. The way the body is constructed. So when it flips, it lands on its tires and wheels a lot. Um, whereas a Stampede, if it flips, it kind of just lands on its top, it stays on its top, and you either have to use your throttle to flip the truck over, or, you know, sometimes you can go over and just kick it over, but that is my comparisons between the two. I do like both the trucks. This isn't a uh, Bash the Traxxas Stampede Session, nor Bash the Kilion Invictus. Both trucks are good, but the Stampede 4x4 does cost uh, around 400 425 440 where the Invictus is 289 um, and I know that you can get parts for the Invictus at Helion.com, and they do come in about two or three days. I've ordered parts from them myself, and they've come pretty quickly. So any questions or comments, please put them below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.